I have Lori Goodstein from the New York Times. Um, there seem to be some provisions in the Constitution, I want to make sure I'm understanding them properly, that seem to be perhaps different from, say, um, a, a province that was constituted, grown up in another way. Um, it sounds like you are saying that each constituent part, whether it be a network or a diocese or, um, I don't remember what the third term is, cluster. That use, a cluster, right, will retain its own property. <coughs> and will also retain um, a right to uh, some of its own practices, for instance, on ordination of women. Can you speak to that and whether that is unusual for a province in uh, an Anglican province? As I said before, there are 38 Anglican provinces around the world. Um, the ownership of church property actually varies from province to province as to uh, who holds the title. And in, in some places, the, the question of title isn't uh, the, the, the kind of life we live uh, in a litigious society like uh, the United States is, is quite different uh, than in many societies. Uh, in terms of, of practice, what the, what a doctrine that, that the church has long held in looking at the church itself is called the doctrine of subsidiarity. Uh, and, and in that doctrine, the, the, you do the work of the church at the lowest level, restricting only things that are <coughs> done at a higher level uh, to that higher level. So that a church is uh, free, uh, a congregation is free to do its mission, and live its life in the way that congregation thinks best. But in fact, there is an overseer, a bishop, who ties the congregations together and brings perspective on the life of the congregation that helps the congregation to be still more effective. Um, in terms of the, the province as a whole, um, we've left the matter of prayer book, for instance. Any prayer book that's presently in use among us is authorized for use in the province. Um, there are uh, uh, quite a range of prayer books uh, in, in use from the basic English book of 1662, which is the standard across the communion and a theological standard, uh, to the 1979 book uh, of the Episcopal Church. Uh, in, in the same way, you mentioned the, the uh, practice of ordaining women. What's true among us uh, is that many of us, many of our jurisdictions and dioceses, ordain women to the diaconate. Some of our dioceses um, and, and clusters, networks, our jurisdictions ordain women uh, to the priesthood. Uh, our common agreement is because the Anglican, Anglicanism has not agreed about the ordination of women, that we will not make bishops um, uh, in, in this province uh, uh, from among our women uh, presbyters because it wouldn't bring unity uh, and it wouldn't be universally accepted. Uh, We've submitted to one another on matters that, that make for unity. Um, again, you should understand in the work we did today, we had a number of women presbyters present. Uh, they were part of the unanimity that said that this was the right way for us to go if we were going to build a united Anglicanism that was at one with the whole rest of the world. Um, so. Uh, Ron Pozzola, Sun-Times News Group. So what are the specific issues that, that your group has decided to separate, if separate is the right word to use, from mainstream, from the mainstream Episcopal Church? Because I'm still a little bit the, unclear about The, the reality is that the mainstream Episcopal Church has separated from the mainstream of Anglicanism and from the mainstream of Christianity. That is to say, within the Episcopal Church, when, uh, when Scripture teaches in a particular way, the Episcopal Church is quite free to say, well, we don't believe that Scripture is correct on this point, and we'll do it our way. What we are attempting to do is to say that Scripture is the ultimate rule and standard of the Christian faith for Anglicans and for Christians, and we'll attempt to live within uh, what Christians and Anglicans have always understood Scripture to mean. Um, on, the, on the question of the um, the, the work of Jesus Christ, Dr. Howell talked about the uniqueness of Jesus uh, as the Savior of the world. Um, many in the Episcopal Church, many um, uh, priests and bishops uh, 
are not able to say that Jesus is the only way to the Father, which is what Scripture plainly claims. So our chief um, concerns are that the Episcopal Church has taken to itself a right to judge Scripture and to separate itself from scriptural practice. And the Episcopal Church uh, has been unwilling to, um, uh, to discipline bishops, priests, um, theologians, uh, who uh, teach that Jesus is not the only way to the Father, not the only means of salvation. Uh, interestingly enough, of course, the Episcopal Church is quite willing to uh, uh, discipline someone like me, uh, who stands for what Christians have believed everywhere and always and in all places, which is the classic definition of, of Catholicity. Forgive me, Bishop, and I'm still unclear about the specific issues. Okay, let me let me get, let me have somebody else. Uh, I've said Scripture and the uniqueness of Jesus. I I would also add um, traditional morality. That is the definition of the family. Marriage. Marriage. The doctrine of marriage. Define that, please. Um, the Christian Church and the New Testament describe marriage as a, 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 a lifelong union. That is to say, marriage is likened to the relationship between Jesus and his church, which can't be broken, is likened to the relationship uh, uh, that exists between uh, a husband and a wife. Um, that, that looks like the relationship we have with our God. Um, the Episcopal Church um, has been unwilling to hold to that standard. Uh, you uh, mentioned before that this is a, a new Anglican province, but it's not a, you, you walked out the camera, sorry. Uh, you, uh, it's not a province like any other province because currently there's not dioceses uh, like you'd find uh, in a, uh, a province in England or something like that. Uh, what's this all going to look like uh, a year from now or five years from now? Are you going to have geographical uh, boundaries held by bishops? Or is it just going to uh, remain in a common cause sort of uh, juncture where there's bishops that uh, represent more than one uh, geographical area? Um, the remarkable thing that has occurred uh, is that we've moved from a federation, which is what common cause has been, uh, to what looks far more like an Anglican province. And an Anglican province is a collection of dioceses under uh, uh, an archbishop. What we've done in the Constitution has been to define diocese, to use three terms as a way to define diocese. One is diocese, a second is cluster, a third is network. Um, our partners in the Anglican Mission in America, which Cynthia represents, uh, have planted uh, 150 congregations uh, over the last um, eight years, 150 congregations that they collect together in networks related to bishops. What we chose to do is to say whatever you call it, that looks like a diocese in ecclesiology, and you can call it what you choose to call it. In fact, it's a group of congregations banded around a bishop. And that looks like every other province in the world, not a collection <coughs> of jurisdictions. And that's one of the extraordinary things that has happened to change among us since the Jerusalem Conference last June. 